In poker news, entertainment, and more, this is the Mark Oak Show. Everybody, how we doing? It's evening show time here at the World Series of Poker. We're live at the Rio. We're sure as hell not in uh, you know, the valleys over in uh, Atlantic City or something. That would be a, that would be quite the surprise. Be a shock actually. But we are having a great time here, and we have some very special guests lined up. We also have a lot of news. A couple of bracelets have been given away in the last couple hours since we were off the air. So, kids, let's fire this up. First, we want to let you know, if you, in case you were living under a poker rock, Vanessa Selps has won her bracelet. What a comeback. That is unbelievable. Uh, but Vanessa Selps uh, picking up a nice $870,000 paycheck as she wins uh, let's see, that would be event number uh, number two, the 25K Mix Max No Limit Hold'em event. So big congratulations to Vanessa Selps as she comes from way down, knocks off Jason Moe. I mean, just starting the final four heads up with just a half a million in chips and ends up with all 9.2 million. So a huge win for her. So big congratulations to Vanessa Selps who the WSOP claimed, hey, it's cemented her legend. I, th I think the legend was already there. But, uh, yeah, she's she's a pretty good, good pretty good poker player. Uh, we also have another bracelet winner. The uh, 1K PL Omaha tournament goes to Brandon Shaq Harris. He was pretty close to the top of the leaderboard the whole way, and Brandon Shaq Harris taking down the 1K PLO tournament. So he will be enjoying a nice little World Series bracelet tonight. Don't know if he'd be hanging out with... Uh, Vanessa tonight, I doubt it, but you know, bracelets are bracelets. They're darned nice. So congratulations to both of those guys. We'll break down the rest of the tournaments for you as we get through the show. Of course, we'll be on until 8 o'clock Pacific here tonight, but we have two very special guests. The only guest, and, and this is the honest God truth, the only guest to be on any of my shows in three years when I wasn't there. <laughs> yep. Let me get, you, get your mic here. Elliot Rowe. Poker hypnotist joining us, Elliot. How are you? Hey, hey, thanks for having us on. Yeah, great, yeah. great to see you this yeah, time. I'll let you guys move in a little closer. <laughs> okay. You got the shirt. I'm like, move in a little closer. It'll be okay. And <laughs> well, the author of Positive Poker, Patricia Cardner. How are you? I am great. Thank you for having me on again. Oh, I love you guys. You're the best. So, so now, let's talk about what you guys have going on tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of clinics here out at the uh, World Series, but uh, Elliot, what's what's happening here? What are we at? Oh, we're running a training seminar tomorrow um, here at the Rio. It starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, and it's me, it's Trisha, and also Jonathan Little. And we're going to be um, talking through different parts of the mental game, how to improve your game. And Jonathan's going to be covering a, lo a lot of work on what it's like to be playing at final tables, how you need to adjust, understanding the difference between playing an event like the World Series of Poker in comparison to perhaps playing your local casino events and, and what you have to do to make the most of the experience. Did you hypnotize him? What'd you do? What'd you do to jump a little? <laughs> did, did you hurt the man? Did you make him dance around like a donkey? What happened? Well, I, I think he uses my MP3s quite frequently before he plays. Yes, so he I, th I think he has been hypnotized to some extent. Yeah. So let me ask you this. As a poker hypnotist, first, how do you get into that? And why is what you do so important? Um, I got into it because I was working with golfers and someone in the poker industry told me that I should really try working with poker players because they get even more stressed than golfers do. Um, so I started uh, working with a lot of poker players. I started off working for free with people on 2 plus 2. Uh, the results were really good. Everyone started making more money. And then I started charging and became a, someone who specializes in hypnosis for poker. Um, that's basically how things got going. In terms of why it's important, um, hypnosis isn't like you might imagine in terms of a stage show 
what it is is just sort of a relaxation process, a guided meditation, but it's specific to poker and we can uncover the root causes of perhaps someone's particular types of tilt. So if they have rage tilt or something like that, we look for the triggers and we look to manipulate and change those triggers so that those individuals don't have those same symptoms at the table. Um, and that's basically how the process works. Well, give me an example of how you work through that process. So you're going to work with somebody and hypnotize them to try and find where these flaws are. How do you do that? Okay, so um, we do the progressive relaxation, which is what would be thought of as the hypnosis. So they get very, very relaxed. Um, they go into a hypnotic or trance-like state, which is sort of the, the state you have as you're driving a car down a freeway and you forget about a section of freeway is the, the state that we're looking for. Once you reach that state, your memory becomes much more vivid and you can basically draw connections to other parts of your life, other earlier parts of your life. So I'll then have them imagine having that rage tilt at the table and then I'll try and connect that to earlier memories. So I'll say, five, four, three, two, one, what's the next memory you think of that reminds you of that event? And they'll say, I'm 12, year old, 12 years old and I'm being bullied. And wow. we'll talk through that process. Um, we'll try and rationalize the bullying, understand that, yeah, these were 12 year old boys boys will be boys work through that situation and then five four three two one what's the next time you think of and I'm being told off by my mom for stealing an ice cream and etc etc and we're working through all of these memories they get very emotional most of my clients cry during one session or another they release a lot of stored emotion and then we sort of rationalize our way through the situation and then as they've gone through that process they understand themselves and their issues a bit better and they start playing differently that's some heavy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I it's, can, it's, it's probably not quite what you expected or what people do. Like Lots I, of people expect just me talking at them, but it's the client talks 80% of the time, I talk 20% of the time. You must be a good listener. <laughs> I get a lot of practice. Ladies dig that, you know. Yeah. It's very important. <laughs> well, I, I can only imagine some of the things that you've had to dig through Given yeah. the given the state of uh, some of our great poker players in the game, uh, what what did, give me an example of one of the craziest situations that you've dealt with uh, going through hypnosis with somebody? Um, in terms of um, the sort of the memories, the, the difficult yeah, the memories and difficulty of getting through it and I, working I mean, it out. Obviously, there's confidentiality involved in sure. all of it, but there's um, everything and anything you can ever imagine from. Um, horrific horrific events that have happened in people's lives um, all the way to things as strange as a teacher told me I'd be a failure and you know the a suicide in the family can have as the same amount of impact as a very mean teacher when you're five years old so there's there's nothing sort of absolutely specific it's not a, a single trigger it's just what that person at that age took as significant and there's something that they're going to then live their life by this new truth in their life. Yeah, that is a, a very profound point to me, and I'm sure you can speak to this as well. You know, I know that going back through my life and you know, saying, okay, you know, why, do I, why was I doing some of the things that I was doing? And you go back to you know, little stuff that happened when you were a kid, and you know, maybe your mom said, you know, said something really mean to you and called you a brat or something like that and, and made you feel terrible or, uh, you know, I mean, just, you know, the bullies on the playground that made you feel like a bum and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that that stuff does really affect you deep down inside and it just kind of burrows in there and there's no way to get it out until you can truly dig deep and, and find it. And the way the brain works is that your brain is actually going to repress things that happen to you that, you know, are very emotionally triggering. Like he was mentioning the suicide in the family or maybe bullying. So you you repress it almost as a protective mechanism. And that's why you don't necessarily remember it and connect it up. Now, when you go through the hypnosis process with Elliot, what he's doing is he's able to actually get you to a relaxed state so you are able to access those materials and then you can work through the materials and then you know he's able to get people to have a catharsis experience which is what we call it when people release that emotion mm -hmm. and then it's no longer a trigger that you are unaware of so he's basically bringing the unconscious into conscious awareness well, it's getting deep in here, right, yeah. Mark? Oh, my God. Don't <laughs> some light entertainment for the evening. Yeah, don't, don't, don't knock me out. I'll tell you, you guys could be here all night. Uh, well, well, Doc, let me ask you this. As this relates to your book and, and all the things that you've revealed in, in Positive Poker, I, how do, where do you take this 
process. And so let's say someone worked with Elliot, you know, and now they're in your hands. Where do you go? Well, Elliot has the hard part, I think, because he's got to dig up all the bad stuff and help them release it. And I'm kind of on the other side of the coin where once you've gotten over that, I help you get to your peak potential. So between the two of us, I mean, really, you're going to be a vortex of calm and uh, success. I mean, how can you go wrong? <laughs> I'm about ready to dig into my checkbook. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so how's the book going? Uh, you know, it just released a little while ago. I mean, it's a fantastic book. I loved it. It hasn't been out that long, uh, but the feedback on it has been very positive. I think people are really enjoying getting a different perspective, new information, and really usable techniques that you know, can help people get the best out of themselves at the poker table. So what shocked everybody the most when they read the book? So I'm sure you got a ton of feedback on it. You know, I think a lot of people are surprised by all the physiological, uh, you know, material around how the brain works because everything is connected, your diet, your exercise, you know, your sleep patterns, your bad, you know, childhood experiences. And I think people are surprised by that. And I think also surprised by the amount of research uh, that went into the book because it's not, you know, pop psychology. It's actually based on empirical research that's been done to show what actually is effective. So I think that's what people are taking away from it. What have you learned from her? Um, in terms of, it's, it's nice to um, add some of that more clinical research to the work and the work that I do with the hypnotherapy it it's between an art and a science with the hypnotherapy a lot of it's about the rapport with the individual working through their memories trying to think about ways of shifting those memories um, and it's nice with Trisha's work that um, it then takes it back to that more scientific psychological research that, and so this is how the brain is physically changing when I'm doing the work that I'm doing so it's nice to see that sort of crossover there God, this is fascinating. So, <laughs> no, I, I, I love this. I, I coached for 20 years, so oh, you know, I did. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so you know I know about, about digging a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about how this is all going to come together at the clinic. What, you know, what, what's the plan to take through with everybody? Uh, and okay. somebody's going to walk out of there and go, yes, I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready to do it. Um, well, what we're doing is we're each doing separate talks. So um, we're going to start off with Jonathan, who will be um, talking about his experiences, what he does to make sure that he, he has the best performance possible at the World Series, how to deal, as I say, with things like final tables that people just wouldn't have the experience of. And hearing those different tactics that you can use as you reach those levels can be the difference between you know, a nice amount of money and a life-changing amount of money. Um, and then, Trisha, you, if you want to talk about your section, Right. My section is on mental toughness, which is actually a constellation of psychological skills. And we all kind of intuitively know that we have to be mentally tough, especially to make it through the grind of the World Series. But we don't necessarily know what to do. And so in my section, I'm going to be giving a lot of practical action steps that people can take away, use immediately at the table and away from to do their pre-competition planning and competition planning to get the best results. So what the hell is Jonathan going to teach anybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Jill. And uh, you know, Zach Elwood's going to be there too, mm -hmm. uh, author of uh, Reading, Reading Poker, Poker Tales, a fantastic book. Tell you what, that is a, a foursome. Yeah, he, well, he's, just he's, he's actually doing um, some of the other events. It's, he's not oh, actually okay. at tomorrow's oh, this event. One. Okay. But um, that's a preview, but, right? Yeah, but he's, he's, yeah, <laughs> he's doing he's doing it some of, some of the other events with us. Um, but yeah, he'll be he'll be covering poker tales, which again is for those people trying to. They might be might be their first, it might be their tenth World Series, but the information that they can be given by someone who's extensively researched and covered, sort of everything around reading tells I mean the the documents that he's created going through television footage are absolutely astonishing yes when you see the level of the level of work that he's he's created a science out of uh, poker tells it's be very interesting material for people especially the online guys who might not have any knowledge on that side of the game I think one of the toughest situations that happens to even the top players here at the World Series is everybody's all happy-go-lucky the first week <laughs> You, you may brick the first couple of events, mm -hmm. and you get through week two, and maybe things aren't going so well. And but by the you know you, by the time you get to that fourth or fifth week, there's a wall of emotion there. It's not just you know the physical going through the grind, but 
trying to shake off four or five weeks of failure when you know this is your Super Bowl and everybody comes in here thinking I'm gonna this, I'm, is, this, the year. this, this is, is it I'm gonna do or, it you know I'm gonna make a ton of money and everything's gonna be great and then all of a sudden you turn around and you're 0 for 20. So what are some of the things that you could do to help players when they're in that spot to get through it, finish strong, and you know, maybe turn it around and win a world championship? Um, well, do you want to go from a sports psychology point of view? Or do you, um, there's, see, what we're trying to, and I think this is a good example of it, there's multiple angles to yeah, work exactly. at it. From, yeah. But what you're bringing up is actually that mental toughness that I was talking about because mental toughness is about two things. It's about motivation and resilience. The motivation, the inner drive to keep going, you know, know what your goals are and keep it. And resilience is the bending but not breaking. So getting back up every time. And, you know, it you have to train yourself to be mentally tough, mm -hmm. which is what we're going to be going over in the clinic. Here are the step-by-step, -step, you know, action plans that you could take to be mentally tough. Now, Elliot approaches it a little bit differently. Yeah, so from my side, um, I recommend pre-game MP3s, so warm-up hypnosis MP3s, um, which basically put you in a very relaxed state, and they are suggestions hypnosis, so that's me talking through how you should be approaching the table. So the, the client or the, the player will, um, will, perhaps they're going through a tough time, they can then use that as a complete relax and recharge. So they're resetting before each event. I also have warm down MP3s where if someone's had a particularly terrible day, um, it can help them release those hands that they keep thinking of all night long and actually help them get to sleep. So in, in that part of the, the series, that would be some of the things that I recommend would be the MP3 side. Um, but then also if I was working with a client, we'd be talking about why they feel particularly surprised that the, uh, the, the World Series has started like that and seeing that they've still got events ahead, they still have this opportunity, the best way to maximize their chance is to play their best poker through those final events and not be tilted, overly aggressive or scared money. Um, so it'd be a case of logically working through that within a hypnotic setting. I think one of the toughest situations that players face as well is winding down either way either way you talk about a cool down there when you're in a situation like what happened with let's let's go to the dealers uh, the employees event that just happened those guys played all night heads up couldn't get it done so now you're sitting there saying okay i'm coming back tomorrow morning i am one person away from winning a, a world series of poker bracelet how do you relax through that you know, I mean, it's it's brutal. It's, you know, I, I couldn't imagine. And, and that's where the sort of the meditation type techniques and these processes, um, that's what they're designed to do. So by utilizing that, by practicing it, you can release that tension and you can put yourself in a situation that, yes, tomorrow is going to be a big day, but rather than, oh, wow, this is stressful, this is an amazing opportunity. I can't wait to get back there tomorrow. And taking it from that positive mindset rather than that, oh, this is crazy. This, oh, this is an amazing opportunity. I can't wait to get back there. I can't wait to win tomorrow. And just reframing it in that way will make a huge difference to the individual. Yeah, and, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, the other thing is a lot of people don't realize you have to train your brain to do what you want it to do. And it's not just thinking, oh, I'm you know, going to think this way or approach it this way. It's a training process that you have to go through. Professional athletes already know this, and every professional athlete works with a sports psychologist, and many of them hypnotists as well. But it hasn't become as well-known or widespread in poker yet. But the highest stakes players in poker know that the mental game is everything. And it's starting to trickle down now to where anybody who you know wants to take the game seriously is starting to learn, I have to train my mind to get the best out of myself on a consistent basis. And, and of course, visualizing and, and preparing ahead of time is very important. Yeah. And if, but you know, of course, you don't want to look too far ahead, but you also want to see yourself at that point where here it is. It's right here. But, you know, it's so far away and it's so hard right. to obtain, too. So how would you guys recommend, you know, from both of your approaches, preparing, you know, a few months ahead of time? And, and this is for any tournament, too. You know, for any grinder that's out there playing a tournament series or, you know, running around for months and months. To put themselves in the right frame of mind as not only to get to that final point, but to go through each tournament 
stage by stage and keep your head straight? Um, well, what I'd be doing um, is is I have within the within the sort of hypnotic state, um, keep using that description, um, have people actually picture themselves as the most professional part of themselves. So they see them playing at their absolute optimal. Them as the professional player. How is that? How does that player stand? How are they dressed? How would that person feel at the table? And have them keep going over that, seeing themselves sitting in the Rio, being that professional, playing that way, staying calm under pressure and using that as a visualization routine it's not about just reaching the bracelet it's about every single session sitting down with that professional mindset saying I know exactly how I want to play this hand and that's how I'm going to play it rather than I feel bullied by that person they keep three betting or I'm gonna jam here and that's that's how I would work on that and I guess for me it's all about teaching people uh, the different tools because there are many psychological tools but I would say to your listeners if you find yourself at the table and you know you haven't had your sessions with Elliot you know you're just on the fly and things are not going well take a minute do some deep breathing we call them deep centering breaths in my business so you want to breathe in very deeply and make sure you know you're getting a good diaphragmatic breathing Hold it for a couple seconds, let it out. Okay, so it's seven seconds in, two second hold, six seconds out. Okay, then you need to think to yourself, self, let's imagine right now that my favorite poker coach is right here with me. What would they tell me are the one or two things that I need to focus on to be successful? And then what are those things? And then actually do them. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go get that bracelet. It's that easy. <laughs> oh, yes. It's that easy. Yeah, yeah. Follow these steps. You will win a bracelet you this year. You will win it. <laughs> you know, if we had more time, you know, I'd say, look, let's, you know, I'd love to let you do the hypnosis on me. But do it, I'll do it on camera. I'm not scared. Yeah. Um, I don't have time tonight. But, you yeah, know, if you want to do that over the road. series. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Be that, yeah, definitely. I know my listeners will get a kick out of Excellent. that. Excellent. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. That would be interesting. And then she can yell at me afterward. <laughs> Mom, Mark. He Let's might go. get you clucking like a chicken there. Yeah, be careful. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've got that in the repertoire. You, no. you, 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 you have done things like no, that. No, don't. no, I don't. Um, no, never, I stay never, away. I stay never. never once. Never once. I don't deal with that at all. This is all, everything I do is performance-based hypnotherapy. I stay completely away from any stage act, comedy, no, no interest to me whatsoever. And I like to distance myself from that. And I actually possible. bring that up as kind of a joke because people think that's what yeah, hypnosis that's, is. Yeah. But and, it's the, and there's the assumption that that's what all hypnosis, you know, that's where everyone has started. That's, I completely come from a therapy type background. Um, there's there's none of that sort of uh, routine, unfortunately, in, in, in my repertoire. So, yeah, you might be disappointed if you want to <laughs> if you want to do a silly dance. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, don't get me dancing. That yeah. could get ugly. All right. So if we want to get everybody into this clinic, uh, we're going to go float the turn dot com backslash seminar yeah right go, yeah, that's go right. get registered and uh, yeah tell everybody a little bit about the you know, times for the clinic and uh, when they can get in okay get so here, um so. it's t there's one tomorrow morning at 9 a.m and uh, if you use the code rio as well on the website you'll get a hundred dollar discount um so it will be uh, 399 rather than 499 and you also um, receive a large amount of training b uh, material from the three of us, from me, myself, and Tri uh, me, Jonathan, and Trisha, <laughs> me, myself, and I. Um, <laughs> and I mean, uh, it's a substantial amount of training videos, certainly from, from Jonathan's mm -hmm. side. Um, the actual value of the package of training materials is actually $1,670. So it, it really is an awful lot of value that we're looking to offer in this course. Um, and then there are further events throughout the series. Uh, there's one on the the 14th at the Rio mm -hmm. um, and then on the 5th and the 7th of July at the Gold Coast. It's going to be something. I think we're just doing our best to bring as much value and training to people for the price as we can because we're excited about getting the mental game you know, out and where it needs to be. I'm going to say everybody if you can get down there tomorrow morning do it. That sounds like it's going to be worth every penny. And Jonathan Lewis oh, is going to be and, there too. And you'll be finished to get into uh, day 1B of the Million Name. Absolutely. Perfect. So we're making sure we're finishing before that so you can come to the seminar and you can still play in the Million Name Maker and you'll have even more chance of winning. That's awesome. Absolutely. Just get them in the clinic. They win a yep. million bucks. Yeah. And, uh, and you just make sure you set. mention us. That's what we ask. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, this is going to be a great time. And Elliot, I'm... I feel so bad I did not get to meet you on Wednesday. Hey, well, I felt terrible. Uh, oh, don't worry. I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah. 
I'm doing well, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but thank you for the well wishes. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It's always fun to have you around. Always it's good. Psychology, there's nothing like it, is there? No, there isn't. <laughs> it's fascinating. So, yep. So make sure you guys check that out. Once again, go to floatthetern.com backslash seminar. Put in that coupon code Rio, and you're going to get 100 bucks off. We'll see you tomorrow and a couple other ones coming up. So make sure you check it out. Guys, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having thank us on. Thank you. Awesome. Good to see you. Good to see thank you, my lady. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there we go. You, you've got your mind messed with for a good uh, half hour on that. Great time. I, I tell you what, this is going to be a clean. You know what? I, may, I think I may stop down in the morning, too. I think I'm going to be here early, so maybe I'll get, get a chance to come over and say hi. All right. So there you go. Let's take a break. I think we need it after that. I'm, a, I'm like mind wiped. So we will take a commercial break. We'll come right back here on the Mark Hoke Show, live from the World Series of Poker. We're going to talk about... Vanessa Selbst and uh, all that's going on at the World Series. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, we got the free ticket to give away. Yes. I've got some. I've got some entry slips for our preliminary entries for our contest. So maybe we'll see if we can uh, give one out today. Yeah, I'm live. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we're gonna do that. So, so the next person that stops by is going to the clinic. So, those of you out there listening, there you go. That's a that's an awesome deal. So, all right, all right. Well, we're gonna take a commercial break, and uh, we'll see if we can give away a trip to the floatthaturn.com seminar here in just a little bit. Stick around, everybody. We will be right back. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel. Tough day at the Felt? Get off tilt and unstuck by escaping to the desert for an extreme off-road adventure with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. We have the biggest fleet of off-road vehicles known in the universe. And since we know poker players aren't exactly early risers, we now offer after-dark tours for all you night owls. And don't forget to stop by the Mark Hope Show WSOP booth at the Rio to win a free Sun Buggy experience. Please call us 24-7 at 1-866-728-4443 and visit us at WSOP www.sunbuggy.com Call us now and take the off-road ride of your life with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. 
Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. 12 years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back on The Mark Hoke Show, and we got a lucky winner. How about that? Guy comes up, says, where's the shootout? And off he goes. We got, let's see, uh, and he entered the contest, too. Uh, Victor Paredes. Didn't give, me a, didn't give me a city where he's from, but congratulations to Victor. So he's going to the Float the Turn seminar. How about that? Yeah. So. All right. So congratulations to Victor. Way to go. Give me one second here. I got to take care of a little extra business. The guys are messing with the Arctic Blue cooling towel which was run under cold water at 11.30 this morning. Yes, I know. Look at this. One, one for 12, two for 20. I know they are. That's why I work with those guys. They're great. Just, just picture that when it's 120 outside. So there you go. There's some Arctic blue cooling towel love. ArcticBLU.com, that is the website. And if you go on the website to order one, it's 15% off, plus free shipping with the code Mark Oak Show. All right. So we'll get the Nate Dowland back in here in just a little bit. But we are going to be talking the legacy of Vanessa Selbst. As, of course, Vanessa winning her third bracelet today. And it, it just a spectacular fashion, too. Uh, of course, started off the... Uh, the heads up play four handed tournament, uh, four handed with about a half a million in chips. Had to take on the top seed who had about three and a half million, overcomes that six to one deficit, starts down another two, two and a half million in the final heads up match, and storms back through, grinds it down, and beats Jason Moe for the victory. So Vanessa Selbst, a huge victory today at the World Series of Poker. And I'm going to tell you, that's one that everybody's going to be talking about for a very long time. What a huge win for Vanessa Selbst as she picks up that third bracelet and has put herself in a position to become a just a, an incredible legend of the game. 
no question, already still the greatest. Uh, well, right now probably can safely say she's the greatest women's player of all time. Uh, we also, of course, had uh, Brandon Shaq Harris picking up a bracelet as well. We want to give him a sincere congratulations. Winning the Pot Limit Omaha event. Shaq Harris was behind on the last hand. Uh, got in with Ace King King five two clubs, or the Ace uh, Ace King of clubs on there. Uh, Popham had him beat, but uh, Shaq Harris rolled it off and uh, hit Broadway on the river to take the title. And Brandon Shaq Harris bringing home that title, beating 1,128 1, players, claim his first bracelet. He's now more than doubled his tournament career winnings. Picking up $141,000. So Brandon Shaq Harris getting it done as he knocks off Morgan Popham for that title. Nate Dowlin. Welcome back. Welcome back. Wait, that's, that's Cotter. Your that's dreams were your ticket out. <laughs> Welcome back. You didn't, you didn't so realize when you were listening. That same old place when you were listening that we to that laughed show. about that Gabe Kaplan would be still a part of your life today because of what you did. He just, I just want to snuggle with Gabe someday. I just want to sit there and, <laughs> you know, Gabe, Gabe was one of those, like, you know, when you watch Welcome Back, Cotter, it just felt like home, you know? You like wish home. Gabe was your dad. <laughs> you really do, or at least a very close uncle. Or your science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would have gone for dad, I think. Yeah. 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 But uh, what a, an amazing day here at the World Series of Poker. We'll follow up on the interview we just did in a little bit. But, you know, first Brandon Shaq Harris coming through was pretty much at the top of the leaderboard most of the way uh, late in this tournament. You know, manages to catch a little little extra luck at the end of the tournament, but uh, knocks off uh, Morgan Popham. Uh, the thrill of winning that first bracelet. How about it? Isn't that awesome? It is. It's amazing. That's all you got? Oh, right now? Okay. I'm still trying. <laughs> Selps, though. It's all good. But then Selps. But then we go to Vanessa Selps, and of course, winning her third bracelet today. Oh. It, and in spectacular fashion. I mean, a double come from behind, heads up. And, and just. How else do you want to start your World Series? The, taking on the 25K? Yeah. Why yeah, not? That's, that's the way I'm going to do it. That's yeah. how Vanessa Selps rolls. Yeah, it's just an unreal finish to that. And I don't think. I mean, I think there was a there was a headline on WSOP.com, um, you know, talking about uh, is she now a legend? Well, I, you know, honestly, I felt Vanessa Selps was pretty legendary as was before that win, but now uh, you you add a bracelet, another bracelet to the case, you add the com massive comeback. Where does she rank? I mean, obviously, you know, I I, I think we can safely say. Greatest female player of all time. I, I, I well, she's already got the 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 yeah. largest. Or she's cashed more than any other woman. She took over Kathy Liebert's spot at the top of that cash um, line, whatever you want to call it for women. But she needs to make that final table of the World Series, don't you think? The main main event. I I I don't think so. To really set that that well, Kathy Liebert made the final table of the World Series, right? No. Who was it? Who was the? That was the, Barbara Enright. That's right, right Barbara Enright. Yeah. I I don't. I, to really cement her legend. I mean, the, here's, I mean, here's the thing for, for Vanessa is, you know, to count on making the final table of the World Series is pretty tough in these days. But to do... She could do it. Oh, oh, there's no question she could do it. And I think a lot of people, you know, I mean, of course, she went really deep two years ago uh, and, you know, unfortunately kind of ran into a little hiccup. But, uh, there, there's Tom McAvoy. I hope he doesn't hiccup. Go get him, Tom. He's been down there reading today. He's been reading a book down there for the last like two hours. Good for him. That's well, yeah. yeah. It, the continued education doesn't stop even after you're in the Hall of Fame. Exactly. Uh, with Vanessa now, where do you think that this puts her in terms of just poker players out there? Period. Is she top ten, top five, the best? Definitely in the top ten. Definitely top ten. I wouldn't say the best yet, but who do, you, uh, who do you take in a match right now? If you're sitting down with Phil Ivey against Vanessa Selbst, who who do you who do you say is the Selbst. winner? Of that? 
So she has less personal problems. That doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt. Yeah. I personal mean, problems hurt a person. Yeah. And Phil's mm-hmm. Phil's got a lot of a lot of money out there in court right now. He's still got twelve million overseas that's still locked up in court. He's being sued by the Borgata. He's got a lot of things on his mind besides just Playing the poker. World Series. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Vanessa's got a great relationship. She's she's well grounded. Um, you know, it, it seems to me, you know, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm overreacting to this because honestly, I felt this way before this bracelet win. No matter what, if there was one player I would not want to play, period, end of story, I would not want to play Vanessa Selps heads up. She'd be the one person that I would look at and say, I I would feel like I have no chance of beating her. Really, I mean Phil Ivy. I may be able to sneak one, sneak one by if I could get really lucky, you know, really lucky. But but just the way Vanessa plays and the way she attacks and attacks and attacks, and just has her head in the right place constantly. And and you know, interesting. You know, when I, I've had conversations with Jesse Sylvia about when he when she coached him, getting ready for the final table in 2012, Jesse had just said there's there's just another level she's at. That is just so far beyond everyone else, and you know, she, there's no question she demonstrated that today. How many, how many poker players do you know could have gone from a six, come overcome a six to one chip deficit, and then overcome another two and a half million chip deficit in heads up play to win a bracelet? I mean, th- that's incredible. It is absolutely incredible, but she can do it, and she'll do it again, and again, and again, and again. She's well on her way to, you know. Uh, when was the first time you heard Vanessa's name? NAPT. A while back when she was winning those NAPTs. Which was oh, that four, four years, years ago? Was, I'd have to, and I think it was older than that. I want to say it was like 08, 09, somewhere in there. I'll have to double check that. But, you know, so just, six, six, maybe seven years ago, tops? Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's, she's just uh, She's unbel- the star. She's the star of the World Series so far. Yeah, she just took down the twenty-five thousand dollars buy-in. It's going to take uh, how long before first place pays out eight hundred and some thousand again? Well, um, the millionaire maker starts tomorrow. Yeah, so a couple so, of yeah, days. <laughs> just a couple of days. There's not many events at the World Series though that pays out over a million dollars for first place. Right. There's right. not. And she took down one of the one of the first events that paid eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So that's a lot of it's, money. Mark. It's gonna it's gonna put her in a place that I don't you know the stratosphere now. There are people. Uh, did some for some reason did not respect her game. Well, guess what? <laughs> well, who was it? So, somebody was bad mouthing yeah, her. Jason Mo, the, the guy that she beat heads up for the for the bracelet. Well, I'm I'm glad that she put him in his place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what she does. So, what a win for Vanessa Selps tonight as she is a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. Congratulations to her. Look look who's over here. Big sexy Lee Childs. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. All right. Sounds good. Lee Childs walking by. Good old Lee. Now you got to talk about the hand. Not, now i got to talk about the no, lawsuit? No, no, what? No. what? What are you talking about? No, mean? the hand. Which hand? You, the hand. You remember the hand. I was going to say the lawsuit. No, the hand. The hand. The, 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 the final table hand. We don't talk about it. It's stupid to talk about it anymore. Okay. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Not a clue. Final table, the, 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 the queens. Remember, the queens. When he folded the queens. Why are you blanking on this? Are you seriously blanking on Lee Childs folding queens to Jerry Yang? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank see, you, Jesus. <laughs> see now, see now, I had to talk about it. <laughs> but Lee does so much more for poker than that. Than that one hand, of course, you know, it does the all in for Christ, too, by the way, you know, great cause for them. So nice job, uh, Lee Childs. But uh, he's always a great inspiration to talk to as well. One of the top minds in the game. So, well, I'm sure we'll see much more of Lee as the World Series goes on this year. I plead the fifth. We shall. <laughs> so w- what's on your mind today, Mark? How what's long on? you been here today? Uh, since about 730 this morning. <laughs> Who else was down here with you at 7.30 this morning? Um, I think I saw a couple custodians. <laughs> uh, there were a few dealers, you know, drunk back in the back. No, no, they weren't. They weren't drunk. 
uh, a couple people at the registration desk, I think. I believe there was a tumbleweed flowing through. Yeah, I, I can believe that. There's usually a, still a couple cash games starting or mm. just finishing. Not many this early, but coming up tonight, I don't expect to see a empty hallway tomorrow morning at 7. I think there's going to be a lot of guys already down here sitting here trying to trying to make sure they've got their seat into the millionaire maker they know where they're going they're okay i want i by the way i want you to be my witness can I turn the right camera now around? no it's just sarah grant we all know but she looks so nice she today. does look stunning today i already told her that so right now we're rich ryan real quick how many people are in line for registration for the millionaire maker right now how many four, four. <laughs> all right so here's the thing if if you want to play in the Millionaire Maker, get down here and register. Because tomorrow the line is going to be out the door. You watch. I will. Do you know what I think well, I might do tomorrow? I might come in and set up a little early, and I'm going to put the camera right over there. And I'm going to turn it on about 10 o'clock. And I won't talk or anything. We're just going to do a live feed of the Millionaire Maker line. Started at 7 o'clock in the morning because that's when that line's going to start. I want everybody to remember this picture right now. There's nobody here in line. There's nobody in line. In the right line. There's nobody in the right line. They're all getting in the wrong line. That's just there's, for players' cards. You know that, right? Yeah. That's not registered. There's, there's, yeah, there's, 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 no, there's nobody here. There's nobody, there's nobody in the line to register right now. And the, that's funny because you can still register late for... Uh, you can... You can still you, you, register late for the 6 p.m.? You can get in the Millionaire Maker right now. No waiting. You can still register for the 10 p.m. tonight, too. You, you can, can afford the 10, p, the, the 10 p.m. It's only like 135, right? You can, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things you could do right now. But the, the big key is if you want to play the Millionaire Maker, here's a great opportunity. If you want to make sure you're in on the first hand, WSOP is quite prepared for you. But I'm just you, I'm just putting it out there. Just, just what I'd suggest doing is going to listen to Jonathan Little and Trisha Cardner before the See, Millionaire and, Maker. And, it, and you can do that if you register tonight. You can. You can do that if you come down and register at 6 in the morning. Yeah. Sure can. Just something to throw out for everybody. I hope you... And there's two different starting times tomorrow. Yes. So you don't even have to worry about the noon starting time. Sign up for the class. Use the code RIO so that you save 100 bucks. Her name is, her name is Rio and Go get some training from Jonathan Little, Blue Shark Optics Pro, and a great author, fantastic author. Have you read any of Jonathan's books? Of course I have. They are absolutely fantastic. Jonathan has won so much money playing poker, and he does so well, and he's such a nice guy. I was walking by Starbucks this morning, and he's sitting there reading a piece of paper, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go say something to Jonathan Little. Introduce myself. That way he knows who's trying to sell his little class here. <laughs> oh. Introduce myself, sat down, had a great little conversation with him. But no, I know Jonathan Little very well. He's a great guy. Absolute great guy. See, now, so now we're talking about those hypnosis flashbacks. Now I'm going back to 2007. Uh oh My first event that I ever played in the World Series of Poker where I had to face off with Jonathan Little. Oh, no. What was it? I what, freaked out. What was the event? Uh, it was a fifteen hundred no limit. Oh. Yeah. He busted first, but I played bad. <laughs> he busted before you? Yes, he did, actually. Wow. Well, you know the guy. Especially Jonathan was on that huge roll. He didn't care. It's like, eh, okay, I'm out. Who cares? Next tournament. Next. Go. Oh, and then what about you when you were $1,500 buy-in? You, you were sweating. You were like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Yeah, I was sweating a little. Just a little. I was a little scared. I know how that feels. Playing a little over your head. Oh, it wasn't over my head. I just played like shit. <laughs> 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 to be very frank, I played like shit. All right. So enough of that stuff. But, yeah, it should be a great clinic tomorrow. So if you come down and register at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., you can then go and go to the clinic. Good stuff. If All you right. would have stopped by the booth, you could have gone for free. Yeah. Lucky guy. All right. Vincent. Good, good for Vincent. Victor. Victor. Victor, yeah. Victor. All right. Let's take a look at what else is going on here at the World Series of Poker because we do have other events. Did that PLO go off already? Uh, Did that PLO, PLO get a done. winner? Yeah, we. that was the gentleman we were talking about. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, you, you just totally let that conversation go and didn't care. 
It's been a long day. It's wait until like three weeks from now, you'll be like, hey, Nate, come here. I'll be like, who's Nate? I am Moose Ball. <laughs> All right. Trying to get it. Trying to get my an update here. I'm not sure what exactly is going on. Well, let's go to event number four, the No Limit Hold'em event. They are down to 46 players. Starting that thing off with 2,224 1K buy-in. And here are your chip leaders at this point. Robert Kuhn is your leader. He is at 505,000. And we've got some fun names on this board. <laughs> I'm looking at it going, Lord, huh? look at this. Uh, Elon Schwartz, of course, uh, you guys may remember him from the final table in, oh, eight, seven, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm blanking exactly what year he was on the final table. But, of course, legendary chess player as well. Uh, Elon Schwartz in second at 418. Daniel DeZenzo is in third at 360. And a guy that he was last year was my pick to win a bracelet. He was my breakthrough guy. Didn't get it done, but here but. he is, three bets on Jeff Gross, sitting in fourth place. So at 352,000. So he's in the mix on this. Uh, Dale Baudin at 290. And then Jamie Kerstetter, who had taken a big Woo hit, a big hit. A little while ago, she had just stopped over by the booth and said so she, she had seventy some thousand. Took a little bit of a bad hand. Turns up a uh, two hundred eighty thousand chip count. She is now in sixth place. Uh, Brian Bauer in seventh at two thirty six. Uh, we got a gentleman who's leading this tournament earlier in the day. Uh, Angelko Andrzejewicz is now in eighth. Uh, Neil Farrell in ninth. And let's see who some of the other uh, big names are that you may know. Mark Radoja still in there. He is in 15th place right now. Cy Williams in 16th. Jake Schwartz in 17th. Phil Collins in 18th. Boy, this, is a, this is a good field. Andrew, for, man, I don't believe Andrew Lichtenberger, Russell Thomas. Bless you. Excuse me. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Um, did not reports in there. At 63. They've 000. been doing really good. Yeah. It's it, it's always a great World Series for did not report. It did. It, it seems it like is. you cash almost every event. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> let's see who else we have uh, listed on here. It's running down through. See we have the big names available. Who cares? To you. Jamie Kirsten right. in the top 10. That's all we need to. That's all we care about. Todd Terry's still in there. Good for him. Uh, Kyle Cartwright sitting there in 84th place. I think some of these chip counts aren't quite updated yet, but that's where we stand right now. Boy, this could be a sensational final table. And I will have to say that if it comes down to Jamie Kerstetter and Jeff Gross, I would have to cry. <laughs> that would be that would you're, be you're very taking not, you're taking railing your friends too seriously. That would then. be very. <laughs> I mean, if someone came up to me and said, "So, Mark, who do you want to win?" <clears throat> be like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" Two very good uh, good friends and good people in the game. So good luck to everybody that's left in event number four. Yeah, there's only 46 left. Those chip counts are messed up. All right, let's go to event number five, the limit deuce to seven triple draw low ball event. We'll go to it shortly. Come on, Mr. Computer. Show me Bill Baxter. Show me Bill Baxter. I'll try, but I think your mouse is disrupting me. Very disruptive. I don't know. Why. I think it's your cat. <laughs> Funny guy. Um, okay, here we go. They are listing 33 players remaining in this one. Uh, Sergey Rebchenko, who has been uh, towards the top of the leaderboard for quite a while on this one, now at 268,000 chips, is your leader. And uh, well, let's start rolling off the names. Elia Lezra in second. Of course, he won a Deuce to Seven event last year, knocking off Daniel Negreanu and one of the great heads-up matches, or match, I should say match-ups. I can't say matches. Match-ups. It was a good match-up. Did not result so well. Alan Kessler. Yeah. Alan Kessler knocking off Galen Hall. woo -hoo. The last three years have been heads-up all three on this. It could good job, be, Alan. Could it be the year of the Chainsaw at the World Series? Oh, my God. He won his shootout? He won his shootout. There's so did our buddy Dutch Boyd? He's, he's, he's a, you know, that doesn't seem like Allen's format either. Allen what, winning a single a, table? Allen, Allen winning a table? It's like, like actually, you know, number one? 
That's awesome. Good for him. I'm happy for him. He just needs to do that again at the final table. He'll yeah. be good. John Hennigan is in third right now. Uh, and we keep going down this. George Danzer, one of the German contingent that uh, I would be expecting to see doing some damage at this year's World Series in sixth. Jason Mercier in seventh. Justin Bonomo in eighth. Phil Galfond in ninth. Nick Schulman in tenth. Todd Brunson in eleventh. Barry Greenstein in twelfth. Michael Chow in 13th, Tom Schneider in 14th, David Benjamin in 15th, Scotty Abrams in 16th, Matthew Ashton in 17th, Calvin Anderson in 18th, David Chu is in 20th. This is unbelievable. Uh, Tuan Lee still in there, Dan Shack still in, Billy Baxter, very short stack, still in the tournament. I'm a world champ. Wow. What a field. That is, that is one of the really fun things about the mixed game tournaments is you just get a bunch of all-stars at that table for the most part. What was, what was funny to me is this morning I got to watch Billy Baxter run down the hallways. I saw that. Yeah. I was like, wow, he can really move for an old guy. <laughs> well, given, given what he does for a living, yeah, I, th I think he's still okay to run. Oh, yeah. Just a hunch. Uh, event number six, and uh, we should be getting some table results here from the No Limit Hold'em shootout. Obviously, we just got confirmation that one of the players that is cashed in advanced is the Chainsaw Alan Kessler. And Dutch Boyd. As he is knocked off Galen Hall. Dutch got through. Dutch got through. All Dutch right. won his table. The captain of my fantasy poker team for the year. The captain? The captain. He is the captain of oh, my WSOP go. media team. Did you sign up for your WSOP Media Fantasy? I didn't see your name on there. No, I did not. You? I was in the hospital. Well, there's week week two is going to be coming up. Week two is going to be coming God. up. Make sure you get in there and get your get yeah. your lineup set. Get Sassy Richie, yeah, yeah, yeah. how'd you do? She's she's playing that deep stack today. Take it down, Sassy. All right. So running down through uh, some of the looks like some of the winners from this one that have gotten through: uh, Scott Manier, Jonathan Clancy. Jesse Wilkie, Joshua Pollock, uh, Chad Burham, Sean Winter, Leo Volpert, very dangerous name right there. Christian Harder is through. That's not good for everybody. Uh, Rob Tepper, Jordan Young, uh, Jared Lundeman, Josh Arier Ooh. has won his table. Oh, we get to have some, some uh, 05 flashbacks. Find out about Jesse Caps. Did Jesse yeah, Caps Yeah, I know win? Jesse was uh, hanging around in there. Yeah, there was still, uh, last time I knew, there were four left, I think, and Jesse was leading the way. Uh, Jesse was down to three the last time he, I got to Ooh, talk to good, him. Good, good. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric Kurtzman, Shannon Shore is through. Jared Jaffe is, looks like he is through. Joseph Chung is through. Oh, this is getting nasty. What a <laughs> have fun with that. Greg Merson looks like he is through. Dutch Boyd through. Uh, David Bakes Baker is through Ooh, to the next round. Go Bakes. The defending seniors champion, Kenneth Lind. Has just Thanks stopped by. Me, How could I forget you? It happens. It happens. Oh, oh, no way. No way. Kelly, you want to come over and say hi to everybody real quick? Come on yeah. over. Because we got to find out if you brought the trophy back. I, I, didn't, the, uh, I didn't keep the trophy. The trophy actually belongs to uh, Oklahoma Johnny. Johnny Hale. Isn't that right, Johnny? Well, I don't Hale? care. You still yeah. should have kept it. Well, I think so too. Yeah. But all I know is I get my name on the side of it, one of eleven names, and and I'm going to look for it this year and make sure my name's on there too. If it's not, I'm going to be really upset. Oh, if they rip you off. That would be bad. <laughs> we we yeah. will take care of that. But well, so <laughs> it's been almost a year since you won the seniors event. What's it been like for you? Well, uh, uh, oh, I, I wish you hadn't have asked me that question, but I'll I'll try to answer it as best I can. It, this the the last year has been the highest of highs and and the lowest of lows because uh, my wife got sick shortly after the seniors and she died in February. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Yeah, I'm sorry too. Uh, okay. uh, quite a bit sorry, in fact. But um, uh, I'm here. She's here in spirit. Uh, she's going to make sure I don't make any bad moves. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens from there. I'm trying to get my head back in this thing. I don't know how good I'll do um, uh, with all the stress and, and you know, everything. It's going to be tough, but I'll do the best I can. Well, i got to tell you, you were without question one of the most endearing personalities out here at the World Series last year, especially among the bracelet winners. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if anybody was more thankful for what happened to, to them last year than you. 
Yeah, I was, I was very thankful. I, I think, um, I don't know if you heard the, the final when they actually gave me the bracelet, but uh, first and foremost, of course, my wife was standing there and I thanked her and there was one, I had one friend in the audience who, the, the word got around, Ken's in the money, let's go, is that our Ken, you know, and, and so on. So they had to actually send somebody down and find out if it was really me and he, <laughs> and he stayed. <laughs> there you go. Nice fellow named Robert. And then, of course, I, I had to thank the entire uh, military, Army, and Navy, and Air Force, and the rest of them, because uh, without them, we don't have the freedom to do what we do. And, yes, and I sir. mean that sincerely. Um, then, uh, of course, the other thanks that I gave out was to the Bureau of Reclamation, without whose dams, this would still be a desert. Yes, it would. <laughs> Very much so. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful. I, I worked for the military for 23 years before I retired as an officer. And then I, I worked for Reclamation for 20 years. And I guess right now you could say I'm on my third career, but we don't know where it's going. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. You know what? You don't have to. Yeah, Come on, you're, man. You're, you, did, you served our right. country well did your time. You can you can surf around a little bit. Right. Yeah, but, I'm just but you know that's always very interesting for guys that are long term military. I know a lot of my family was military, and when they're when they're out of the military and then they go through a career and all of a sudden you know retirement hits, man, you're just so used to that structure, you yeah. know, and and now all of a sudden you have the freedom to do anything you want. You know, it, it's it's really a difficult spot. It it it, it becomes more freedom when you. Uh, take away one of those bracelets and the money that goes with it let me yes. tell you <laughs> a lot more freedom uh unfortunately i haven't really had a chance to enjoy that yet uh like i said you know with with all the stressful events that have recently happened and spending all the time you know going back and forth to hospitals and whatnot um but i'm i'm getting ready to i'm gonna go on a couple of cruises and i think i'm gonna go visit the philippines i'm gonna try to uh get over to uh, Australia and play the Aussie Millions. Oh, great! And there stuff like that. I, I just got back uh, last month from the WPT in in the Bogota, Bo Borgata, Borgata. Um, I didn't do real well there. I I, uh, I did money one time, but very low, not enough to to write Channel Four about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I went pretty far in the six max, um, and that was kind of a story. I'm in the si I go in the six max, the first hand of the tournament. I'm on the big blind. Four people fold around to the small blind, and he raises. I wake up with some garbage, so I throw it away, and he picks up my two chips. Second hand of the six max, three people check around, uh, check around to him, and he raises again. I wake up with a pair of aces or a pair of kings, so I go like, okay, uh, I re I re-raise you and I re-raised him back, the big blind folds, he comes back over the top, we end up all in, he turns over aces, I got the kings, I'm out of the tournament on the second hand. Oh. So I had to rebuy oh. to get back in, and, and uh, then, then I went pretty far. But uh, it, 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 it happens, and you know, you shake hands and you walk away. Yeah. That's what you do, because it's, it's part of the sport, it's part of the game. So how many events are you going to be playing this year now? I mean, it's, well, I'm happy to see you here early. I mean, this is great. Well, I'm, I, I already signed up for the Millionaire Maker tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, that's first right now. And, and then on the 6th of June, of course, I'll be here for the seniors. Um, I haven't made any other decisions beyond that. Uh, you you might, might see me anywhere. I'm pretty free right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sounds great. Boy, wouldn't that be something to, to win the Millionaire Maker and have, be in a seniors champion as well? Well, yeah, maybe so, but I, I would really just, I, you know, just like to have two bracelets. Yeah. You know, uh, there's, there's only eight or 900 people walking around with one bracelet, so I feel pretty confident that, that that's, or not confident, but uh, I feel pretty good that I'm one of them. Uh, but there's a lot fewer people walking around with one with two bracelets. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is very true. <laughs> so it would be a, it would be a wonderful thing if I could do that. So what knowledge have you been able to absorb now? You know, from when, when it was over, you know, you, and obviously you went through a lot, but still you've gotten to play some poker and been able to reflect on, you know, the what you were able to accomplish. What did you take from all that that you've been able to apply moving forward in your poker career? I don't know that I've taken a lot from it that uh, yet. Uh, like I said, I've been busy, uh, but that 
that will help me go on forward too much. But uh, what I do, what I do think about, and and stands out in my mind foremost is that everybody talks about. Well, some people have asked me. They say, "Where did you get lucky in the WSOP seniors?" And my answer is very simple. I played that thing for three days, 15 hours a day, and I never got aces one time. And I consider that lucky because had I gotten them, I probably would have shoved in and somebody would have sucked out on me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's your luck. But luck, luck has a play in any individual tournament, any individual hand, any individual session. But over the long run, if you don't have the skill, you're not going to get there. No, you got there. And I got there once. It was a spectacular victory, and I tell you what, I can't. You know, it'd be great to see you playing again tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be sure. there. I'm gonna be there. You'll see me. Uh, hope I can go far. I do too. Thank you. We got a lot of you. Got a lot of fans out there, buddy. You do. I, I, well, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know many of them. I, I have um, a couple of Twitter accounts. And I've got forty thousand followers, but I had most of those followers before I won. So um, I'm I'm not sure people even you know know who I am except you know people that are associated with the WSOP as I haven't had time to make a name yeah well it should be another exciting summer and boy uh, looking forward to seeing though what you can do if we can get some extra damage in this year and yeah. hey maybe defend that title make some history I'm gonna defend it I might not go far but I'm gonna defend it yeah you know that's all you can do that is, that is all you can do Kenneth <laughs> all right man it's good to see you again and you too God bless you my friend take care Defending seniors champion Kenneth Lambden, one of the nicest guys we've ever gotten to meet here at the World Series of Poker. Oh, I love it. We'll see if he can bring home that bring home that big old trophy again. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. All right. Just never know who's going to stop by here at the World Series of Poker. Very cool. So Kenneth Lynn doing his thing. Yeah, it's. That's right. <laughs> Get her done, sir. It, it is so not hard to root for him. To what? It's so hard. It's so it's not hard to root for Ken of Lim. He's the nicest guy in the oh, freaking he, world. He is. He's fantastic. He, he should just be tattooed in an American flag. He's the most patriotic man I've ever met. Yeah. So very happy to see him back at the World Series. Sorry about the uh, the tragedy that took place. That's a terrible. It's not a tragedy. Tra no, no, no. I was talking oh. about the, the wow. passing of his wife. Yeah, that was touch on the oh, uh, That was that was touching. Yeah, that was touch on. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's uh, hey, let's get one more break in before we wrap this up. We'll try and uh, finish up uh, our recap there on the shootout. I think we're just rolling for that. But when Kenneth Lynn stops by, you stop what you you're stop doing. What you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Oops. All right, so let's uh, step back. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out, no matter what you're doing, when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. 
It's time to get on board with the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour. The PPC caters to the amateur player as well as up and coming and touring pros with affordable buy ins and outstanding structures. The fastest growing poker tour in the United States invades Las Vegas with three tournaments June 29th through July 1st at the Golden Nugget and Tampa Bay Downs July 10th through the 20th for the North American Championship with $300,000 in guarantees. Win your way to the PPC World Championship in Aruba, featuring the $200,000 guaranteed main event, hosted by PPC Ambassador Joe Sirach. For all the details, visit us at ppcpokertour.com. Join in the excitement in Las Vegas and across the U.S. with the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. Want more of the Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. There, I just felt like going dramatic. That was fun. Welcome back to The Mark Hoke Show. We are live at the World Series of Poker. Woo! All hell is breaking loose in the building. Two more bracelets given away today. Blood flowing in the shootout. We got a deuce to seven low ball. It's getting really tricky, tricky, tricky. Eh? <laughs> hey, it's not that tricky. Dude, I've got hours and hours to fill of air time. I got to. <laughs> they're not all going to be good ones. But there goes like Jamie Kerstetter. Jamie Kerstetter rules. She knocked out Chewy. Oh, did she end there? Yeah. Ooh, she knocked off the Chew Dog. Ooh. Tough break for Chewy. Can't run into the Kerstetter buzzsaw. It's not good. All right. Uh, back to where we were for the World Series information. Uh, let's get to that shootout. I couldn't remember if we got through everybody that passed. I mean, I'll tell you what. Let's get a refresh on that. That'll be fun. In this case, we have some yeah. new updates. Of course, uh, the shootout tournament you're playing for. Win that first table, gets to the cash, and then you got to beat another table and another table to win. Uh, so let's see who else we've got on the board. Oh, Eugene Kachloff. Eugene. He's through. The uh, dangerous Ukrainian. One of the better players in the world, no question about that. Not a uh, doubt. Let's see. we got any uh, <laughs> John Dolan. I don't think that's the John Dolan, though. But we do have a John Dolan through. Kyle Julius has advanced. The very dangerous Kyle Julius. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Nicholas Palma is through. Uh, looks like Andres Hoivold has advanced. Recent, fairly recently moved to Las Vegas. Uh, Chris Triba looks like he's gone through as well. Yeah, wow. Um, and I think that's about it. The $1 uh, wonder, Chris Triba. Yeah. So uh, Kessler not listed as through yet. Uh, well, But is. I guess the, yeah, the 31,000s could be through. Uh, some other battles going on right now. 
Uh, we'd have to check and see the matchups. But some players still in play at this point. Uh, Amanda Musumeci, Robert Mizraki, Jesse Caps. Looks like Jesse's in a dogfight, and he didn't have an easy table, that is for sure. Uh, Max Pescatori still hanging around in there. Konstantin Puchkov. Of course, you remember Konstantin from all those caches two years ago, <laughs> setting, the, uh, setting the World Series record. Just a took a page out of the Alan Kessler playbook on that one. <laughs> it's cash, 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 cash. Uh, Faraz Jaka is still in there. Uh, Isaac Barron, uh, Mike Manisau, DJ McKinnon still in, David Benfield, Scott Sieber, uh, Matt Salzberg, Stephen Chidwick, Jake Cody. Those are all short, short stacks yeah, for J this level. J.J. Lou, Matt Waxman. J.J. Uh, J. Lou is having an amazing year, or I, I should say months, month. Yeah. yeah. The, the, well, the last month she's just been crushing. I think it's because she got the cast off. <laughs> that, that couldn't hurt. It was holding her down. Oh, man. It wasn't. <laughs> Weighing her down. Uh, Kathy Liebert still listed as in. Jason Somerville is still listed as in. Dan O'Brien. Uh, we saw Dennis Phillips, so that means that could have uh, been the end of Dennis Phillips. Dennis Phillips' night a little while ago. I'm um, sure of it. And some of those, Josh Duhamel. So yeah, we'll get some more updated numbers as this goes on, but uh, we should be getting pretty close to either you know, two-handed or three-handed on most of those tables. But that's going to be an exciting second round. That's for sure. A lot of great names making it through. And then 1,500, too. That's the tables are going to be tougher that. tomorrow. The table draws are going to be really interesting to see who's sitting with who. Oh, everybody, it's going to be like it's going to be like a high school wrestling tournament. You just come in and see, oh, there, look who's in my bracket. It's, it's scary. Because look at all the players. Look at all the players that are winning right now. And think of the, think of the, the top ten that could have to sit together. It'll be fun. So we'll, we'll see what goes on uh, the last thing I'd want to see is Eugene sitting at my table when I walked up to it tomorrow morning. I'd pass on that. Yeah. Be like, something's wrong. <laughs> table change. I'm like, here's my 36K. <laughs> have fun. So I have no idea, so, sir. There's some yeah, going down yeah. there and down there and down seven, there, but there's probably seven, not any there. Seven card Raz going on. <laughs> Where's the bathroom? As, uh, yep, welcome to my hell for three years. <laughs> uh, seven card Raz being played on, of course. Uh, only, you know, usually only top players get reported on this. Uh, Yuval Bronstein uh, picking up a few chips early. John Manette, Phil Locke. Bugsy who Siegel. Oh. Who, else, who else we got here? Uh, just trying to find some interesting names. Tom Cuisineau. Uh, yeah, we'll stop. Dave, David Bach in there as well. Eric Crane. Yeah, so some uh, good players off to a quick start. So that's not bad. Alan Kessler still beaming with glory. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! <laughs> That's what did it. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of uh, Alan Kessler. Boy, if he wins a bracelet, it's over. Apocalypse is struck. Not, I'm not saying Alan Kessler, which should he could is, is not deserving of winning a bracelet. I'm just saying that everybody else is going to flip the hell out if he actually if he actually wins a. Do bracelet. you think he? Do you think he'd leave it in his car? Have you seen Have you seen Alan Kessler's oh, I, car? Uh, yeah, Alan Kessler's car is not the sexiest thing. <laughs> it's hard to ride in, too. Yeah. Have you Have you yeah. seen the videos from Will yeah, Will Follier? I have. <laughs> Will Will's thrown up a couple videos of uh, Alan's car that it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> it's kind of It's kind of like when you have three kids, you know, piling stuff in the car, but it's actually just one of that all live in the car. Yeah, it's It's not a good thing. Not a good thing, but. <laughs> Are we going to play hooker, not a hooker here on the Mark Oak Show? No. <laughs> Come on. No. Come on. <laughs> oh, we all know there's no hookers in Rio. <laughs> Why do they call it the hooker bar? Not, well, because there used to be a lot of hookers at the hooker bar in the Rio. <laughs> they, do you know the official name of the bar up there? No. It's the hooker bar. <laughs> there used to be a lot of hookers at the hooker bar. Yeah, if, their purse, if their purse is on the bar... I'm just saying. I mean, I. Well, I'm glad you know all the signals. Do they do they wave a pinky finger too? Is no, there no, something the, else we got to? If if the, the bartender actually instructs other women that if their purse is on the bar to take their purse off the bar, unless they're a prostitute. <laughs> so I'm just saying. All right, fair enough. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hooker bar. The more so you know, tell kids. Me, hooker or not a hooker, Mark. Stop it. <laughs> you know you want to say hooker. No. 
no, 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 no. <laughs> Two hookers. Hey. <laughs> okay, then hooker and not a hooker. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're obsessed. She's All right. a hooker. So, so that's where we are standing right now here at the World Series. A couple of bracelets given away, a lot happening. And, uh, of course, tomorrow, you know, I should have gone over tomorrow's schedule. Shame on me. Uh, let's take a look at what is coming up. The Millionaire Saturday. Maker. The Millionaire Maker what? What? and What's The that? Millionaire Maker What's is that? coming up on Saturday. What's that? If you're not in The Millionaire Maker tomorrow, then don't come down to the Rio. What, what, we don't have a room for you. What tournament's that? Is there only like nine people in it or something? 9,000 probably. There might be more people in this than the main event. Mm, in terms of entries? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Well, how many times we'll can see. you re-enter? We'll see. It's, is a re it? it's a re-entry event. Players eliminated in flight A can enter flight B. So as soon as so that so means they can't they, get in. So as soon as they gank out in in the the first flight, then they will return and go crazy in flight B. And I can't wait they, to they, see that line. And, well, and here's the the really interesting thing about that. Of course, there's late reg in in these levels too, so or in these in these flights. So you can actually bust out around you know, seven or eight o'clock and still come back and get into flight B. If you bust out, if you bust out an A, you can come oh, back yeah. in late reg in B. Wow. Yeah, that was part of what created all the chaos. All right, you got three grand for me, so I can go no, I make sure I got three grand both for you. bullets. Yeah, you go, you go find your bullets somewhere. Where's else. Where's Raymond Davis? Raymond, Raymond I need it. I need Raymond. a buy in. Raymond. All right, but uh, so that is uh, well, that that's all we're dealing with tomorrow in terms of terms. That's it. No other events starting tomorrow. Of course, we'll have a couple other ones finishing tomorrow. But uh, still got the dailies. Well, daily in, deep stacks. In terms of bracelet events, that's what we've got going on. Daily so, deep stacks. Yeah, so if you bust out of flight eight and flight B, get in the you know, get in the late yeah. uh, late deep stack tournament. <laughs> then coming up on Sunday, uh, we have a one thousand dollar no limit hold'em event, and uh, one of my personal favorites, the ten k limit Omaha high low split eight or better tournament, mm. will begin. Also on Sunday, that is a three-day event, so two three-day tournaments coming up. And then, uh, of course, uh, coming up on Monday, you know, usually a lighter day, we've got the No Limit Hold'em six-handed tournament, $1,500 buy-in. So we'll have that one snapping off. Tuesday is a Pot Limit Hold'em $1,500 event and the No Limit Deuce to Seven Draw Lowball. So that's your upcoming schedule in the next few days, and we're going to be here to cover every little bit of it. Woohoo. And I'd say we pretty much got it all covered tonight. So far. Everybody's uh, kind of chilling out. The hallway's piping down for a little while. Did Bill Baxter get bu busted out yet? And, of course, walking around, though, is Kevin Mathers patrolling the hallways, looking for poker stories for Bluff Magazine and information for at KevMath. Wow. It's just do, do you want to say hi to everybody real quick? Because they, cause they love you so much. Well, yeah. Sorry, we didn't leave a lot of room there for you, Kevin. We'll we'll correct that. Yeah, well, it's it's okay. How's it going? How's it going, everyone? It's been a while since I've been on the show. It has. Uh, you know, you've been busy with stuff, so. You know. just, just a tad. Yeah. So, Kevin. Yep. Let's uh, get your historical perspective on what happened today. Vanessa Selps, two come from behind stompings. Impressive yeah. role. Yeah, it was. It's it certainly is. I mean, winning her third bracelet. It's it just like she she ties um, the record for uh, fe you know w female players with three. But she was won all three in open events, which is quite the accomplishment, I have to say. So um, yeah, I mean, like you said, she was down big against uh, the relatively unknown Aldi Carolus. Then she came from behind, beat him. Came from behind against Jason Mo today, and uh, Jason Mo had been talking a lot of trash. Yeah, what happened with that? You, you have, I'm sure you have all the information on that. Well, I think it's just um, Jason plays a particular style of poker, and he doesn't really care for the way Vanessa plays poker. I mean, they're both relatively aggressive. Um, it just seems like you know, it seems like there's a hit. You know, basically, like people feel that she just just gets lucky a lot, which hmm. I don't think is really the case. No. But you know. She plays a style that's different from a lot of other players. 
But I mean, you know, you know she's just just very aggressive and, and completely. So it's just he plays a certain style that just goes against that. And he said a lot of things over the over the over the course of the tournament. It just basically just basically said she played bad. Wow. So that's I don't know if it's it may have, it may it just may have been something that's been ongoing between the two, but. You yeah, know. you think there had to be some history there because I mean, man, you're not shaking that beehive. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't want you don't want to get uh, Vanessa riled up because she'll just you know she can she she can you know she can strike back as well. So I mean, it's already like playing her is already like getting dropped into a box of razor blades. Yeah, you know, it's it's never fun, but yeah. to to aggravate her even further is just plain stupid. Yeah, but. I, you know, I, and I don't want to. I don't want to sound overreactive on this. So, you know, where I mean, Vanessa already had a gr- an incredible legacy, mm-hmm. but now when you add another bracelet and it, you add it in the fashion that she did, where does this put Vanessa in terms of the elite players in the game? How high up is she on your list with a victory like this? Wow, that's a that's a tough question. I mean, she's definitely been top five for a, for a, f- a few years. I mean, especially since she. Basically came back. You know, she had done. She was doing getting the law degree. She had done really well. She sort of stepped away from poker for a little bit, and now she's back. And she's just like, you know, basically just crushing everything. And you know, she won the bracelet last year in the ten game, and she just she, she really buzzed through that. You know, that yeah. final table. That was probably one of the more impressive performances in WSB history. Just the way she just just tore that just tore the final table apart. Um, you know, it's I mean, it's definitely something. That it sort of moves her up a little bit. You know, in, in, into the. You know, she's already high up in the echelon. You know, if um, you know, maybe top three. You know, you sort of figure like you know, it's sort of you figure like like you sort of think Negrano and Ivy. Maybe I mean, you know, I, I think the, the Vanessa's a solid third in that in that uh, in that lineup. Yeah, it's a very fair assessment, and uh, I'll tell you what, I I I'd almost rather play Ivy than her at this point. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, unless it's Backrot, you know, Backrot. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got the edge. So yes, he, he does have the edge. He's got to sort it out. Very impressive uh, run for Phil Ivy at the Baccarat table. Yeah. Got to got to say. Yeah. And uh, so week one of the World Series, of course, we have one more day here with the Millionaire Maker where all hell is going to break loose. Yeah. Um, so we take Vanessa Selps, and what are some of the other stories that you and the Bluff Magazine team are looking at right now? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's, there really hasn't been anything incredibly, I mean, I guess, you know, the, the one sort of, con, you know, we did have to have some sort of controversy in the first week of the WSP. It, it was, um, you know, regarding the uh, shootout event today. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was a period where they basically 10 minutes in, they stopped the clock for like half an hour because there was, a, I guess, the issue was that certain dealers were dealing out, were basically uh, blinding off players and other people were, other dealers had basically put the stacks in the well of players who hadn't sold their who had not bought it, these stacks, so and you know a lot of people were upset about that, and uh, you know people were basically saying this is like it's not like the first time they've ever done a shootout tournament. Yeah. So it's all right. They finally figure out what they're going to do, and they basically decided that if, if there's unsold stacks, they you know every time the bu- every time the button passed that particular stack, they they were blinded off. And you know usually, if you register late for a tournament, you get a full stack. Mm-hmm. But you know with shootouts it's sort of different because they're sort of like. Uh, to, you know, there's sort of like, um, you know, people will sh- people like to show up late, but you know, pe- you know, you really should start on time for a show because you know you want to get, the mo- you know, you want to try to accumulate as much as fast as you can. Right. Um, you know, but like in most of our tournaments, you know, you can late red, you can show up, you know, like, like, um, well, say, well, it's like yesterday's event, you know, the one k in the limit. You could have showed up at dinner break, and, you know, you could have had ten big blinds, but you know, pe- some people want to play with just ten big blinds. It's, it seems crazy to me to spend that hard, you know, spend, you wouldn't think of that spending a thousand dollars and going that route. No, you'd no want to get not as many, today. You'd want, you want to get as many big blinds as you want, yeah. as you could. Yeah, so it should be, a, and you know, a lot of big names advanced in that shootout too. It's going to be an exciting, uh, yeah, exciting def- second round. Yeah, definitely. The second round, of course, always playing a big name. I mean, it's like, for example, like Shan Short, when there was three handed, it was him, Victor Ramdev, and Michael Mizraki. Either one of those, any one of those three would have been been a huge win but you know it's he came out on top and now he advances the second round and hopefully advance once more you know, he's gonna play for about you know a couple hundred thousand i believe it is if i remember so uh yeah it's uh quite intriguing quite, you know first few days have certainly been exciting uh you know it's like i said you know the best it's sort of like this is like we had two bracelets today the uh second and third bracelets of the series you know we had brandon shack harris who won the 1k pillow 
you know, that was a big win for him. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you know quite the quite the excitement going on around here. So, and I, last question I'll ask you: How far down the line will the money uh, millionaire maker registration be for people that uh, did not register at what, today? At, let's say what time? Let's, let's, say, let's say like nine. Like let's say an hour before the tournament starts. Hour? Wow. A half hour. I'll give you a half hour before the tournament half starts. Half hour. It'll be. I would well, say well, we're asking how far the the registration line is going to be for the millionaire maker tomorrow. I think you'll see people half passed. hour for edge. Well, I gotta take a look here. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's not a bad idea. Kevin Mathers is gauging the situation. Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I sort of can't see. I gotta get a look. I mean, that's the poker kitchen. That's a, that's the junior poker kitchen right there. Uh, uh I'm gonna say. Ooh, what's 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 past the junior poker kitchen down there? Oh, is, there, is, that, is, that got, the, is that Blue Shark? Blue Shark uh, No, I think Blue Shark's before that. I think we've got like the the the, the onesie booth, onesie and booth, the Zeus booth, I, you know, and, the, and the GPI booth. We'll okay. we'll say three booths down. We got three I'm gonna booths. The, I'm going to say the onesie booth. Okay. You know, you know, the, the 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 people are usually there are very attractive at the onesie booth. I okay. have to say, so people may not mind staring at the young lady that's that's uh, usually manning that booth at that time. That'll be that'll be a good distraction. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna be waiting for a while. And this is like one of those things. Like, you know, this, like this is a good time. You know, if you're if you're gonna play the money maker, the the millionaire maker, this is a perfect time. Empty, empty, empty. I see no one over there. Zero. So, there you go, Kevin. Uh, more wisdom from Kevin Mathers. Thank you. And, uh, and by the way, Kevin, I'd like to say that one of the accounts that I managed was your twenty thousandth Twitter follower. Really? Yeah. It wasn't. So you, you credited someone else, but someone. No, I think it was BJ. I think it was BJ that was. No, he was. He was now. He, now, he, he was now how long ago was BJ following you? Really? BJ Nemeth was following you, right then. All of a sudden. No, no, no. no, no. no. He, he sort of he sort of rigged it. I think he rigged it. And right. That's what I'm saying. So what, what was the what was the what was the account? That, that, that was the uh, double digit covers account. That hopped in there. Yeah. Because I, I watched. I saw 1999. I went click and. Uh, yeah, I screwed. Someone screwed you. Yeah. I think someone else may have unclicked and. Yes, it was. It was an unclick and a click. Yeah. See, see, next for 25,000, I'm just not going to say it. I'm just not going to say I'm at 25,000. I agree. I think that's. I'm just right going to make it. I'm just going to be honest about it. Not like, BG is not going to be my 25,000 follower. That's. That's dumb. Yeah, that would not be good. Kevin, good to see you. I'm sure we'll see you throughout the World Series. Yeah, and I see you, know, you have quite the uh, interesting aware, uh, array of, uh, you have the blind squirrel. Yeah, run um, good I gear. See, I think you got some poker joker here. Yeah. Yeah, poker joker. I mean, the Minnesota, I got to just to add, uh, the Minnesota poker scene is, is quite interesting. I was it, up there um, last year, I played the event running aces, but uh, yeah, the poker joker guys, uh, they seem to have something going on here. It's, it's, it's a little cult. Yeah, it is. It is, it is a little, a little bit, cult. Yeah. It's it's certainly an interesting that that part of the country they, they got some quality players up there, and they're like an Eric Wright, um, Blake Bone. You know, I mean, I'm 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 obviously skipping a whole bunch of people, but there's they they have they have quite the thing going on there. So yeah. I just wanted to add that. All right, well, Kevin, Sorry. back back to magazines. Yes, back to magazines. By the way, Arctic Blue, Arctic Blue cooling towel. Get one of these. It's hot here in Vegas. Very hot. By the way, if you really want proof on that. That towel was wet down with cold water at 1130. Hmm. And it is still wet. And cold. Yeah, it's cold. It is cold and wet. Yeah. That's that's quite the combination, Mark. It's a, it's a winner. That's what they're designed to do. That's right. All right. There you go. Well, Kevin, thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll see you again soon. I'm going to sign off and try uh, to relax I, a little I, bit. I shut, I shut, I, I'm shutting you down? Yes, you are my final interview for the night. All right. Well, thanks thanks for all the poker listeners out there, and uh, you'll, you'll certainly hear my voice a few times more during the series. All right, buddy. Good to see you. Same here, man. Kevin Mathers, everybody. At KevMath, as if you didn't know already. He's a, he's a hero. And, yeah, make, feel free to take one of those uh, oh, FOGO coupons. No, oh, yeah, I'll take the coupon. Yeah. Uh, these magazines. Yeah, we got the GPI mags. And, uh oh Oh, Kevin's like, I bury know. those. <laughs> There you go. Sounds like a plan. All right. So, guys, that is going to do it for us tonight. We will be back tomorrow in the Beehive with the registration for the Millionaire Maker, maker taking place, plus so much more. It's going to be a wild one tomorrow here at the World Series of Poker. So we will see you then. I want to thank uh, all of our great guests, uh, Kevin Mathers, Kevin Lind, joining us, uh, Trisha Cardner, and Elliot Rowe. All sorts of great names in this podcast. So thank you for being with us. Guys, we'll see you 
tomorrow tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Should be a good one. We'll see you then. Bluff Magazine. Bluff Magazine. Bluff.com. Bluff.com. At Kevmath. <laughs>